Hello everyone, I'm Jay. Welcome to Forbidden Files. Early in 2020, a piece of news caught everyone's attention. Kobe Bryant's helicopter crashed on Mount Calabasas outside Los Angeles. The legendary NBA superstar died tragically. In the aircraft with him at that time were his 13-year-old daughter, John Bryant, senior pilot Arizo O'Brien, and six friends of Bryant's family. The accident was sudden and the scene was tragic which made fans all over the world feel sad. In addition, there were indeed many doubts in the case. For a time, speculation never stopped. Some people think that behind Kobe's death, maybe there is a huge conspiracy unknown to everyone. Today Jay will review the whole story and truth of this accident. At 9 o'clock on January 26, 2020, the misty morning rain brought a heavy fog to the whole city of Los Angeles. Although the visibility is not good, Mike Dale couldn't wait to go out because of the fresh air. Just like any other Sunday, he went riding outside Los Angeles with friends. Mike was a big fan of the Lakers. He was excitedly chatting with his friends on the way about the Lakers away record against the Nets the day before yesterday, and he was looking forward to today's game between the Lakers and the 76ers. When they rode their bicycles across the hillside of Calabasas, they saw a helicopter flying over them. It was not uncommon to see a helicopter in Los Angeles, but the flight altitude of this helicopter was very low while the speed was extremely fast. It was totally different from what they'd seen before. Soon, they heard a loud bang. Thick smoke billowed out of the heavy fog. Mike and others realized that they just witnessed an aircraft crash. So they immediately called the police, but Mike never imagined that sitting inside this helicopter was actually his idol Kobe Bryant. When the journalist told him Kobe Bryant was not the only one in this aircraft, and Kobe's daughter Jana was also in it, Mike was hit hard. As a witness to the accident, Mike felt a living guilt. All he wanted to do was hurry back home to hug his wife and six-year-old daughter. Like everyone else, Mike had been closely following the investigation of the accident, but the investigators told everyone that the crashed aircraft was not equipped with a black box. Therefore, the cause of the crash was still unclear. The scene of the accident was tragic and the physical damage to the victim was very serious. It wasn't until the third day that the investigators identified the victims through fingerprints and announced that all nine people on board were dead. The official report extinguished people's last hope, because the cause could never be confirmed. A lot of discussion and speculation appeared online. TMZ, a famous American entertainment news website, first reported this accident and raised three questions in the report. First, Los Angeles had a rare heavy fog on 26th. The visibility was very bad. Why did the aircraft insist on flying in such weather? Was it true that the experienced professional pilot and the tower operators didn't realize the danger? Second, Kobe Bryant's aircraft once circled in the air six times. Did this behavior have any special meanings? Did anything hard to control happen to the aircraft? Third, why did the aircraft change its route during the flight towards the mountainous areas in the heavy fog? It was hoped that the official could give explanations for these questions. The National Transportation Safety Board was in charge of investigating this incident. In the preliminary investigation, they found that the engine was still running when the aircraft crashed, because cut branches were found at the crash site, and there was no obvious indication that other parts had been damaged before the accident. In addition, the aircraft was not equipped with a black box or other recording devices, so the investigation team had to dig for the truth in the tower's recording and radar data. It wasn't until February this year, a year after the accident that then SPS finally gave the truth of the accident, Jay also found a recording of the conversation with the tower before the aircraft crashed. Let's look for the truth together based on the recording and the itinerary of the day. The scent of the helicopter Kobe Bryant and others took that day was in 72X. In addition to not having a black box, the aircraft also did not have a terrain indication and warning system. The aircraft belonged to EX, a company which specially rents helicopters for business guests there would be pilots inside. The aircraft departed from John Wayne Airport. The destination was Mamba Sports Academy located in the east of Camarillo Airport. They were going there to attend a game. The original departure time was 9.45 am, but Brian changed it to a m because he wanted to watch the other team before his daughter's game. The aircraft was scheduled to fly based on visual flight rule, 
The so-called visual flight rule refers to that the pilot uses his eyes to determine the direction. According to this rule, the pilot can't fly into the clouds, as clouds will block the sight of the buildings below and obstacles such as mountains. It is specifically required that the flight altitude of the aircraft should be below 6,000 meters. Cruising speed should not be higher than 250 kilometers per hour. It also requires the visibility to reach a minimum of 4,800 meters in the heavy fog. If the conditions are not met, the instrument flight rule should be followed, and the pilot needs to determine the orientation using the instrument in the cockpit. But the Federal Aviation Administration stipulates that EX's aircraft can only fly based on the visual flight rule, and the company's aircraft are not equipped with terrain indication system, so IFR is not met. At 9.07 am, the aircraft took off from Wayne Airport. It was scheduled to fly over downtown Los Angeles, along the Ventura Freeway to Camarillo Airport. The weather on that day was very bad. The visibility was about 8 kilometers in the heavy fog, so all police helicopters were grounded that day. At 9.20 in the morning, everything went well at the beginning of the flight. At this time, the aircraft was flying over Glendale. The visibility was about 4 kilometers. The crew requested to Bob Hope Airport to fly under special V for flight rule, special V for. This is a flight rule under special circumstances. It can only be used after the consent of air traffic controllers. It has some relaxation on the basis of VFR, which allows the aircraft to fly in the visibility of 1,600 meters. After waiting for a few minutes, the tower allowed the aircraft to continue flying. During this time, Kobe's aircraft circled in place. This explains the second question raised by TMZ News. At 9.27, Bob Hope Tower contacted the helicopter to advise them to change the direction of flight route from Interstate Highway 118 to Ventura Freeway, so they could bypass Bob Hope and Van Nuys airports. At 9.33, Bob Hope Tower contacted the helicopter again. The aircraft finally stopped circling after confirming its route, and started flying along Highway 5. At this time, the aircraft was at an altitude of 426 meters, but the lowest point of the clouds was already 335 meters, so the aircraft had broken the rule. At 9.37, the aircraft successfully transferred to Highway 118, and communicated with Van Nuys Tower. At 9.39, the aircraft began to fly south, the pilot confirmed the transition to VFR condition to fly. It could be seen that the weather condition was better, which made the tower and pilot think they could continue flying. Soon after, the helicopter began contacting the Southern California Airport Tower. At this time, the aircraft was at an altitude of 463 meters. It was only 173 meters from the ground. Although the altitude was very low, the aircraft was still flying smoothly according to the pilot's plan. At 9.43, the aircraft was about to enter the Santa Monica Mountains, but at this time, the weather suddenly became terrible again, according to the National Transportation Safety Board. Based on the photos collected in the survey, the heavy fog had even flooded some peaks, extremely limited visual. At 9 hours 44 minutes and 34 seconds, because the terrain was approaching, in order not to hit the mountain peak, the pilot made an emergency climb of more than 300 meters in 36 seconds. Meanwhile, the pilot told the air traffic control he wanted to climb above the clouds, but at this time, the air traffic control changed the liaison. The liaison wanted to confirm the exact position of the aircraft at this time. He asked the pilot to press the dent button. This button is located in the cockpit. When the button is pressed, the aircraft flashes twice in the radar screen. It is convenient for air traffic controllers to confirm the position of aircraft, but unexpectedly, this tragedy began with pressing this small button. At this time, the flight guidance obtained by the pilot was that when there was terrain and other similar scenes in front of the flight path, the air traffic controllers could notify the aircraft first to get the aircraft to avoid in time. At 9 hours 45 minutes and 10 seconds, the aircraft began to turn left. The altitude began to drop rapidly. The pilot said he was climbing to 1,219 meters, but the radar showed that the altitude of the aircraft was dropping. At 9 hours 45 minutes and 38 seconds, the aircraft was at a speed of 298 kilometers per hour crashing into Calabasas Mountain, which was the scene that Mike and others saw. After the investigation, its BS believed that the pilot fell into a state of spatial disorientation at that time. It means that the pilot misjudged the attitude, position, and movement during the flight.
The aircraft is flying flat, but you feel it's tilting, even flying backwards. In this incident, pilot Erez O'Brien was in this state. As he flew through the heavy fog, it was very difficult to confirm the flight direction, and he was distracted to press the dent button. When he looked up again, he must have already had spatial disorientation. The pilot reported to the Southern California airport he was about to fly to a height of 4,000 feet and climb over the mountains. In fact, the aircraft was rushing to the ridge at a speed of nearly 300 kilometers per hour. It is believed that the pilot shouldn't have risked flying in the heavy fog. When circling near Bob Hope Airport, there was a clear opportunity to stop flying, but he was still stubborn and continued. In the end, it was his mistakes and violations that led to the death of Kobe Bryant and others. For a while, the pilot became the target of fans' accusations. Bryant's wife Vanessa also filed a lawsuit against EX, asking the company and the pilot to compensate her family. So, what kind of person was pilot Era Zobayan? FAA pilot certification database shows that Era was a certified instrument pilot. He got his commercial pilot's license back in 2007. After joining EX, he soon became the chief pilot of the company because of his superb flying skills. Throughout his flying career, the total flight hours have reached 8,577. The flight hours on the wrecked helicopter have also reached 1,250, and he had been flying in Los Angeles for 10 years. The experience was quite rich. Era himself had a great passion for flying. According to Era's colleagues, unlike many pilots' conceited personality, Era was a very calm and steady person. His constant emphasis when teaching students was to follow rules and regulations. In the hearts of many colleagues and students, Era Zobayan was a great ordinary person. But such a pilot, why did he agree to take off in harsh conditions? Was it because of Kobe Bryant's strong demand? In fact, there is no evidence that Kobe Bryant put pressure on Ara before taking off. The two of them had a good personal relationship. Ara was also a fan of Kobe Bryant. In an earlier interview, Kobe Bryant said that he often flied in helicopters. He said he could reach every corner of the city in this helicopter within 15 minutes. That was why this helicopter was in use. He spent all the time saved with his family. He wanted to cherish every chance to see his kids, sharing his time with them, even for as short as 20 minutes. At that time, it was the task assigned by the company, the passengers were his idol and his daughter. Ara took over the task after weighing it. On the day before the accident, Ara also successfully flew over the route with another group of passengers. Only the destination was John Wayne Airport. Kobe Bryant's itinerary was just the opposite and the weather conditions the day before were much worse than the day of the incident. He was confident that he could take Kobe through the flight, but no one thought that the accident would happen so suddenly. It surprised everyone. Just a few days ago, on May 16, 2021, the 2020 Basketball Hall of Fame awards ceremony was officially held. Kobe was officially inducted into the Basketball Hall of Fame. As one of the greatest players in NBA history, all the honors he received came from his diligent will and strong heart. Numerous failures and devastating injuries failed to knock him down. He was a real fighter. His presence inspired countless young people. The four o'clock darkness in the morning in Los Angeles may never change, but his fighting spirit could inspire people. It's just that everyone's life in the world is fragile. Kobe Bryant is no exception. We are lucky. I hope everyone can follow the rules. Let these disasters never happen again.